In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the Boolean tools. All right, so Boolean modeling is a great way to get shapes very quickly. And it works really well with objects that appear to be machined. So let's go ahead and start creating the bracket that's going to hold the camera onto the drone. So I'm going to go to the bottom view and I'm going to select the drone body and then right click and then hide that selection. Let's go to our create panel and then shapes, splines, and we're going to use rectangle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to left click and drag out a square and you can hold out control to um, constrain the square to be perfectly square. Um, you don't have to do that because I'm going to go ahead and just type in 20 anyway for that value and then we're going to go to our move tool and then type in 0 and the X, Y, and Z uh, just to make sure that that is in placement. Now with um, this particular workflow, you need to make sure that all of the splines that you create are on the same Z plane. So I am going to put them all at 0, 0, and 0. And that's just going to ensure that the Boolean operation will work properly. Now that I've created that, let's create another rectangle. But it's going to represent the piece that kind of comes off of this until it goes into the cylindrical shape. So I'm going to left click and drag this out. I'm going to type in the values of 10 and 5 on this. Let's grab our rotation tool and let's rotate it 45 degrees. And then let's move it to the corner of this. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and snap it to that vertex on the corner of that um, square that we created first. So let's turn on the angle snap, or excuse me, the snap tool and then right click and make sure that vertex is on have midpoint turned on. We'll use that here in just a little bit, but let's go ahead and snap it to here. And then we're going to create a circle. It's about this size here. We might try to do something like maybe 4.5 in there. And then what we'll do is we'll grab our move tool. Let's right click on those snap settings again. Let's go to midpoint and then turn off vertex. And let's snap it to the midpoint of that segment. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees and then grab my move tool and switch it to the local direction and then I can drag it out in a local um, direction here and make it easy to line that up. So I know that it's centered on that and I just want to pull it up to here until it meets these corners and I want it to get really close to that. Okay, and what I'm doing here is I'm just ensuring that it creates just a single vertex when it um, when we join these together or attach them. All right, so that should be close enough. Now that we have that, let's select the main square that we created. Actually, we need to create the other three pieces for this. So let's select those two. Let's group them in just a temporary group. And then I'm going to go to the hierarchy panel and affect the pivot. Let's switch this back to the view reference coordinate system and type in zero on all three. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my rotation tool and hold shift and then rotate those pieces 90 degrees. And then by doing that, I'm going to do that three more times. Okay, and so it, it creates all of those. And then let's select that main square right click on it and convert it to an editable poly or excuse me editable spline object and then we're going to attach these other pieces so you'll need to click on all eight of those so the four rectangles and the four circles so now that they are all attached we can now go to spline mode and select the main spline and then we're going to scroll down in our tools and you'll find the boolean tools here now there are three Boolean operations that we can use when using splines. We have union, subtraction, and intersection. Union is simply going to unify all of the splines while cutting out any extra geometry. The subtraction is going to subtract a shape from another shape. And then intersection is going to subtract everything except for the items that are uh, that have in common that are intersecting with one another. So for example, 
if we were to intersect these two pieces, it would leave behind this shape right here. So let's switch it over to Union, and then let's turn on the Boolean tool. This will allow us to start picking the different shapes that we want to use. So now you can see that it's getting rid of all of that extra geometry or extra um, topology in there, and it looks great. You'll also notice that because we lined it up pretty well, it got rid of any extra vertices in that. Now that I have that, what I want to do is I want to add something extra to this. I have some holes that I need to put in it. I have one right here in the center, and then I have one on each corner. So to set those up, we can simply come in and create new circles. And I'm going to create one right in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click and drag it out. And I'm going to try to get it really close to this edge. And what that'll do is it'll just allow me to center this up, at least get close, by just looking at the width of the edge between the two circles. And this looks pretty good. So now what I'll do is go ahead and adjust the radius to something like 3. And then I'm going to affect the pivot and center it, or not center it, but I'm going to zero it out. There we go. And then let's rotate it with the angle snap turned on. Hold down shift and rotate it 90 degrees. Do that three more times. Okay, so now that's done. Let's create one more circle and let's make it a big one here in the middle. Not real big, but let's do maybe five. Let's grab our move tool. We don't need to affect the pivot on this one. We could just zero it out because that's what we want anyway. And so now let's select the original object. Let's go to the modify panel and let's go to attach and then attach the five circles that we've created. So now that all of those have now been attached, we can go in and go to spline mode, turn off attach mode there, and then we can use the Boolean operations. Now before we start picking, we need to choose which Boolean operation we would like to use. In this case, I'm going to use subtraction. So let's go to Boolean, and let's select it, and then pick all of those pieces. And I need to get the top two. And then once those have been um, set, we need to get the geometry. So we have these operations, and they all have this Boolean information on them. And so what we need to do now is add in a modifier to create that geometry, and we're going to use Bevel Profiler. So with this, if we go to our perspective view by hitting P, you'll see that it creates this geometry, but it doesn't have any thickness. So we need to adjust the extrude thickness. So let's take this up to 1, and you'll now notice that we have some nice, clean geometry. Now, there's one little issue that I have. It's beveling along the bottom, but not across the top. So this can be controlled by going to your capping section. You'll notice that the start is bevel cap, but then the end is just capping it. Let's do bevel cap on that one as well. You'll notice that it does bevel, but it's beveling all the way down to the center. And the reason for that is because of the bevel depth. On each side, it's doing a depth of 0.5, which adds up to our total extrusion. So it's not allowing us to have a flat edge. So what we can do is simply type in 0.25 on that and hit Enter. Now we have this nice, clean piece of geometry that can be used as a bracket for our drone. Now, if you wanted to add more circles in here, like maybe for some screws or th something like that to fit into, you can do that. But this particular object is not going to be really be seen in any of our renders, so I don't need to get too detailed with it. Now, one thing that you might want to do with this is possibly um, set up some, um, or clean up the, the topology of it. One way to do that is to reduce the amount of resolution that we actually have in this. Um, this bevel you know, is, is pretty low. I would want to change the bevel of that to maybe a convex bevel, and it gives us this nice smooth edge. You could also switch it to a convex, or excuse me, concave, and that will cut inward. You have all of these great bevel profiles that you can choose from. I'm going to set it to concave first, and then I'm going to adjust the amount of steps that I have in that. I don't want it to go too high, so maybe two would be good. 
And then we also want to think about maybe reducing the amount of curvature that we have in the middle. It's very, very smooth. Um, so I'm going to go to Editable Spline. Let's go to Interpolation. And we could reduce the amount of steps that we have on this. So if we go to one on our steps, it will give us this nice um, low resolution piece that what we can now do is come in and uh, convert this over to an editable poly object. And then we can start to um, fix the, the topology, make it nice and clean. Now this is not an object that you have to do this to. You could just simply take the interpolation back up and make it smooth and leave it just the way it is. That's totally fine. This is not going to be a piece that is going to deform during animation. And because it's so nice and smooth already, we won't really need to add a smoothing algorithm. Now there is one thing that we do need to make sure we have turned on, and that is the generate mapping coordinates. It'll create some nice UVs automatically for us uh, with this particular object. Now you can come in and make some changes to the shape. So let's say that looking at this, we have these really sharp curves. And what I want to do is soften those a little bit by using the fillet tool. So I'm going to select all of these vertices. And with all of them selected, I'm going to use fillet. And fillet is going to um, split them into two, giving us a nice little curve. So let's go to fillet. And we're going to use the interactive mode. I'm going to left click and drag this out a little bit. And look at that. So now we've smoothed that out. And we can now go to the bevel profile, see what that looks like. It gives us this really, really nice looking curve. And I'm very happy with the way that looks. And now what we can do is just simply uh, deselect that, right click and unhide all. And here we have our drone. And all we need to do now is go ahead and just position this piece. Uh, make sure that you're positioning the spline. You might want to show end result with that and then move it up and that'll make things much much easier so now that we have that in position let's go ahead and duplicate it for the next one so hold down shift duplicate that down and then make it an instance in case we want to make any changes to it later now what I want to do is I want to show you another way that we can use splines to model um, very simple shapes like this and I want to create these little cushion pieces for the brackets